Hi everyone. I am still getting ready. We went, my family and I went out of town last weekend and it has just been crazy to try to catch up on stuff and we were only gone for three days. It's not like we were um, gone for a really long time, but I mean, it's just oh, the joys of, of summer, I guess is what it is. But it has just been challenging to get ready. I had actually prepped this Facebook Live last week before I left, so thank goodness. Otherwise, I'm not sure it would have been done just with everything that was going on. My paper pumpkin came while I was gone, though, and things have been so crazy, I haven't even had time to open it. I'm just now breaking the seal on the box. So I wanted to open it, though. Um, we're not going to make any cards, but I just wanted to look at it, and I've just, I thought now was a good time. So this month's paper pumpkin coordinates with three suites from the catalog, the woven thread suite, the garden lane suite, and the come sail away suite. So if you already own some of these products, then your paper pumpkin kit is going to coordinate with them. If you don't or own those products, but you love this paper pumpkin kit, you can always order these products and it'll all coordinate together. That's what's really awesome. Now in August, Paper Pumpkin is, let me hold at this for the stamp set, and I really love this stamp set. This, um, You've Been On My Mind, I think is my favorite in there, and there's lots of fun greetings. Paper Pumpkin in August is, they've told us, they normally don't tell us, but they've told us it's going to be tags, and there's bags to put on the, to put the tags on the bags. Um, but if you don't like 3D projects, if you don't want to make the tags, there is an add-on kit that you can purchase this month. We got Pretty Peacock, love. So you, there's an add-on kit that you can purchase starting August 1st. It's $10, and it's um, basically card bases. It's 24 card bases and envelopes, so you can turn your August paper pumpkin into cards if you don't want the if you don't want the tags. So keep that in mind. So even though it's a 3D um, item in August. I can't do two things at once. Even though it's a 3D thing in August, it's more um, gift bags than anything else. Um, if you want the cards, you can just purchase that add-on kit on August 1st in the online store, and you'll be all set when your paper pumpkin comes. Okay, let's take a look. So we have some linen thread. Okay, I'm telling you guys, I have not even opened this. So... We're just gonna, oh, there's some little um, like paper clips in there too. Little tiny paper clips. There's a few in there. Um, I've seen the cards because um, I've seen from other demonstrators, these are sequins and like, looks like pretty peacock and maybe mint is what it looks like. Very pretty. So we have some dimensionals. So we have little mini dimensionals. And then these dimensionals are kind of cool. They're, um, they're circles. Let's see if I can pop one out, there we go. So they're like full circles. There's like a ring and then like a full circle. So that is really cool. I think my lighting is funky. Let's see if I can lighten things up a little bit. Um, so, and then all of the, all of the card bases and stuff. Ooh, these are big. These are bigger than normal. These are glue dots. They are much bigger than normal. That's kind of cool. That's the cardboard that comes with it. But there's, um, there's some gold tags. The card bases, this one's really cool. It's embossed with lots of little dots. That one's really cool. Um, some more card bases. These look like uh, Mossy Meadow Stripes. Um, these are the other card bases. I'm gonna just going through this really quick. This is not our project for today, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time. And then here's some of the die cuts. So we have a nice stitched um, circle. There's that sailboat. Um, I'm trying to shove all this back in there. Oh, the envelopes. I'm going to move those out of the way. They're all lined, though. They're all lined. Very cute. There's some leaf die cuts. So you can see that Paper Pumpkin is an incredible value. And I haven't done anything with mine. Those wheels, so cute. And then here's some more, um, like, DSP. And these are, like, die cuts. These will pop right out. So really, really, really cute. And then the finished cards. You always get... Um, Picture the finished cards, instructions, and then there is always, um, you know, kit contents, and you can always go to the Paper Pumpkin um, YouTube channel, and they always have a video on how to put all these together too, which I really enjoy because I'm not a big instruction reader. I'm more of a visual learner. I like to see it done. But so there's our, those are what the cards are going to look like. So they're really, really cute. So maybe in the next day or two, I'll be able to sit down and actually do this if 
catastrophes stop happening at my house. We'll see. But um, if you're not already subscribed to Paper Pumpkin, there's a link in the video description. So go ahead and subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. It's an incredible value. I love it. I ex get excited every month when it comes. I was hoping it was going to come before we left because I thought that was going to be fun to do in the car, but it did not arrive. So a um, couple other quick things. Bonus days are here. They are almost done though. The earning period ends on, in July. So you only have what, like a week and a half. July ends on next Wednesday, just over a week. Um, about eight days left to earn your coupons. You can start redeeming them in August, but you can only earn them in July. So make sure you place your orders. If you need to place an order, please head to my online store. Use this host code. When your order's over $50, I'm also going to contact you and you can choose a free set of blends. So that's pretty awesome too. And then if your wish list is just so extra long, you should consider joining the Stampin' Up! family. There's no obligation to sell or do anything with it. You can certainly just order all your products at a discount. Now, demonstrators saw the catalog today. It went live for demonstrators at one o'clock. We're not allowed to share it, but we can pre-order that from that catalog in August and you can add holiday catalog items to your starter kit in August as well. So if you love Christmas, if you love getting a head start on the crafting, you might want to consider joining um, the Stampin' Up! family in August. This promotion goes through August 31st. You get $155 of product for only $99 and that includes free shipping. So it is an amazing value and you can put all that holiday catalog stuff in your starter kit, which is fantastic. It's a great, great deal. Okay guys, we are finally going to move on to the card. Now, this card is so stinking cute. Look at this little walrus. Oh my gosh! So I've been making slider cards for a while and I love them. And I promise the more you make, the easier they get. And they are actually not very complicated anyway. I'm gonna show you this card. It's really not complicated at all. You're gonna be shocked at how easy this is. But I really love this. And the, when I saw this greeting just floating by to say hi, I knew immediately I was gonna be making a slider card with this walrus set. He is so cute, isn't he cute? He's just floating along on that iceberg. So cute, right guys? So we're gonna make this card. I'm using two stamp sets today. I'm using the Will Walrus Be Friends, which is a mouthful, let me tell you, it's hard to say. So we're using this little guy on the iceberg, and then we're using the just floating by to say hi. Now you could really use, I mean, almost any of these walrus images. This one would be really cute too. This one would be cute. I mean, any of them, the little swimming guy would be cute swimming along. So, um, and then we're using the birthday backgrounds. I'm just using this little, this little splatter, these little dots. In the back, that's the only one I'm using from this one, but the Will Ra Walrus Be Friends. This is our main focus today. It's a super cute stamp set. Okay, we're gonna start with all of our stamping to begin with. So what I'm going to do, I have a scrap piece of the Thick Whisper White. Now I chose to use Thick Whisper White for our, our walrus here because he's getting a lot of action here moving back and forth and I just wanted to make sure he was pretty sturdy. Um, he would probably be okay with our regular Whisper White, but um, I think just for stability's sake, the Thick Whisper White's the way to go. So I'm going to stamp him and we're gonna color him in Memento. Now there are no dyes for him, so you do have to fussy cut. But he's actually not that complicated to cut out, I promise. So I'm gonna squeeze him on here and I tested to make sure he would fit because I've already cut out one and I didn't want to like cut into a whole nother sheet just for just for one walrus. So perfect. So we're gonna let that dry for just a second and put that aside. And we're gonna stamp our our pool party piece. This is our background. We're going to stamp that. And I'm also stamping this slider piece too because when the card is closed, I want that to be like a continuous piece. Like, um, And you could even, if, I mean, if you wanted it to still be continuous on the back, you could do another piece of cardstock and put it back there and stamp that piece. But we are just stamping our slider piece and our background piece. Our slider piece is one inch. What is this? By... This is one by five, and we're gonna end up trimming the, ang angling the end a little bit. You can see that little punch back there. And then this is um, three and three fourths by five. Okay, let me get out some grid paper because I don't want to get ink all over my mat. I'm dropping papers all over the place. 
<laughs> I'm telling you guys, it's so, you know, we weren't gone that long, so I didn't think that adjusting to be back was going to be so complicated, but I don't know. We are in like the downhill summer slope here though, because, um, I mean, we're, we're doing back to school stuff now. School starts August 12th, so it's just around the corner now. And I knew that, I knew coming back, we would be getting ready for school. So I think that's part of it. I think we're just all caught up in the school madness and it's just crazy, 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 crazy. But I will be, I'll be glad when the kids go back to school. Um, it's just, I, my summer schedule is just so, um, I don't want to say messed up, but it's just so much harder to get stuff done with constant interruptions and I mean, you guys know. But I'll be glad when they go back to school. I always am. They make fun of me. Okay, so I just did that. Um, lots of little splatters, just kind of randomly. I feel like we're like in a dark zone or something. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully it's better for for you guys. Um, and then I'm just randomly going along this paper too. And it doesn't matter if they overlap. I mean, this pattern, this stamp is real. I mean, the pattern is kind of wonky looking anyway. So if they overlap, it really doesn't matter. There is no perfection to this. All right, one more thing we're gonna stamp is our greeting. Where's my paper for that? And this piece, I believe it's um, seven eighths by, I don't know, like three, maybe two and a half. We're gonna end up trimming it down, doesn't matter. Just, I'm gonna stamp this on the side here. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna put our ink away. We do not need our ink anymore. I'm gonna pull this out and put this away. Maybe, we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna put our stamped components aside for now and I'm just gonna color my walrus. Now I do, when I was coloring my other card, I realized my pool party blends were getting a little low. I use pool party a lot. So I hope there's enough to get through this one. If not, you guys don't worry, I have a plan. So um, again, I say this every time I use blends, wherever the artist has added that, um, those little lines, is where you want to hang on one second I'm getting a thing on my phone okay just want to make sure we are all good okay so where the artist has added the little lines is where the, it's naturally gonna be darker the artist has already done all that thinking for you you don't have to think yay no thinking okay and then where it's where there's ripples in the water I'm just gonna add that I had little highlights to that too with my dark okay now we're gonna go in with my light we're gonna hope there's enough juice in here. Hope there's enough. So far, so good. We might not get a full blend on here, just because, but you guys don't worry, I have a plan. So you can see, it's really, I use my pool party a ton. I love my pool party, especially my light pool party, to add um, backgrounds and skies, and I love to kind of outline images, too. I'm really pressing hard just to get anything out of this. So I think it's time to reinvest in some more pool party especially the lights and I really should just order a ton of these when I buy them so but that's good we're gonna go with that I'm gonna go in with just some more dark just to kind of highlight those darker areas once more so I got a little too blended out okay I think that's good okay now we're gonna use smoky slate for our walrus and I'm gonna start with the dark I'm only using two blends today and again Say it with me, where the artist has made lines are your cues where it's supposed to be darker. And then on his tail, and anywhere that's kind of sitting up against the ice is just naturally gonna be a little darker. So we're gonna go in with our, our light one and just blend it all out, just color the whole thing. There are tons of ways to color with blends. I prefer the dark to light method, but lots of people do the light to dark method, and that's fine too. I prefer dark to light because I like to see more where my shadows are gonna go right away. And it's just easier, I think, to blend them out that way than to go to color the whole thing. And sometimes when you color the whole thing and then go back and add the dark highlights, sometimes your image just ends up being a little darker to begin with than you wanted it to. And so, and it's always easier to add color, but it's very hard to take color away. So I like to just start light and you can always add color. So I'm just going back in 
Adding some of those highlights. There we go. There's our super cute walrus. Isn't he cute? So cute. He's really cute. Okay, now through the magic of television. <gasps> My fussy cut him. Ah. So see, I told you guys, if we ran out of the pool party blend, I was going to be just fine. I wasn't worried. Now I have another walrus I can do for another card. So, but because the main focus is of the assembly of the card, I really didn't want to spend a lot of time fussy cutting the walrus, so I did that ahead of time. Now, we're going to create the slider part now, so we're going to take that stamped pool party piece, and I'm going to use a ruler for this because, and it really depends if you, um, if you want, and I'll show you in a minute why I'm using a ruler, but I want my walrus, and let me just, We'll put him on the back just to, I want him more um, down toward the bottom half of the card. So I'm going to just make sure that I have, and I'm using a T-square ruler just to make sure that everything is nice and even. And I'm doing this on the back because nobody will ever see the back so I can do it nice and dark. Okay, and then, so I'm going to use my ruler again. And I'm going to go in about three quarters of an inch, maybe half an inch on each side and just mark those lines because I don't want my slider to extend past those lines. So all I've done is just mark half an inch from each side and then just drew a straight line. And that's gonna give me a nice guide for our punching for our slider channel. Okay, we're gonna use our classic label punch to do our punching. And I'm gonna turn this upside down. I'm gonna start on the right side and I like the classic label punch for this reason. Let me get my pencil out to show you. The little points on the punch is exactly where we're gonna line up that line. So I know that it's gonna be straight. So I'm gonna start with that punch right on that um, cross line right there that we made. I'm gonna make sure that point is in the, the little corner there. So I hope you guys can see that line is straight across right in those points. So I'm gonna punch this. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna line up that line right there. Perfect, Oop, I moved it. Okay, just perfect. Now it's gonna overlap a little bit on this side. That's okay. Now if you have any little scraggly bits, I don't know if you can see that. I just have a little, couple little hairs. I'm just gonna take my snips and boop. Trim those off, boop, that's it. And then you have your, your beautiful channel. Now, you could have, if you wanted your slider to be up higher, you could always push your cardstock in as far as it'll go and punch it. And that will make sure that you have a straight line across as well. But I didn't want my walrus that high, which is why I drew the line. But if you have a smaller slider or a smaller image to slide, you can absolutely do that. Or if you want it to go across the middle of the card, you can absolutely do that. Okay, we're gonna do one more punching and then we're gonna start assembling this guy. I'm gonna take, oh man, what is this? Pretty label maybe? I think that's what it's called. I don't know, it's that one, you guys. I don't know what it's called. It's, It's been like a Monday of a Tuesday. So I'm gonna slip it in through the back this way instead of slipping it in this way like you normally would. I'm just slipping it in through the top here. And I just want that little curved end on my um, slider there. So all I'm punching, let's see. I mean, I only punched just a sliver off. That's all I did. And that just gives a cute little edge for your slider. Okay, we are ready to start assembling, guys. <laughs> I have dimensional things all over my legs. <laughs> over my pants oh that's fun fantastic okay I am gonna erase my lines though real quick just because the um, this slider thing is gonna be um, rubbing past it and I don't want it to pick up any of those pencils marks so I'm just gonna erase some of those if you don't you could do it in pen you don't have to worry about that and I think I thought about that when I was making the card the first time okay so we're just gonna line that up where we want it to be, and then we're gonna flip it over just like that. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our foam adhesive strips. These are fantastic for cards like this, for movement cards, and I am really just like eyeballing it. It doesn't matter. They can be trimmed if needed. So I'm taking a couple of them, and what you wanna do, I'm gonna hold this in place, is you wanna put it up 
not right up against the slider track, but you want it to be close enough that it's not going to interfere with it. And I'll show you that in just, let me get the other one on. I know I'm not making a lot of sense. So I'm just gonna put those on. And you want them to go all the way across. If you were to use, I used to use dimensionals, just like a few on here, but sometimes when you would slide it, it would get stuck on one of those dimensionals. So you want a full channel. So you want it completely across. So you'll see that it's not, it didn't glue that down. It's not attached to it, but it's made a nice little channel for that to slide in and out of. And I'm gonna put one more on the top. This is gonna get adhered to our card. This is what's gonna adhere it to our card. And I just wanna make sure that everything is the same length. Let's trim that piece off, it's a little long. Okay, perfect. So those are our foam adhesive strips. I don't use them a lot, but I do use them a lot when I'm making um, movement cards. Okay, now we're gonna add our little walrus. So I'm going to use some mini dimensionals for that. I'm gonna take two of them. I'm gonna put this in here and over here in the left corner of that slider channel, I'm gonna put a couple of dimensionals. And the dimensionals in the slider channel are gonna do two things. They're gonna stop it from going too far that way and they're gonna stop it from going too far this way so you can't pull it out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that's all. We're gonna take these off first. So you gotta make sure that he that it's in the slider channel first. So that's dimensionals, oops, don't stick it on. Those dimensionals are on there, and then you're gonna stick your walrus on there. Just like that. And that is basically your entire slider card. He's stuck down with those dimensionals in that slider channel. That's moving freely, because we made our little, our little guards here. So it's not flopping around, it's moving freely. Isn't that cute? Okay, all we have to do is just some finish assembling and then he's gonna, then the card's gonna be done. Okay, I'm gonna trim my greeting piece into a banner. Movement cards are some of my favorite cards. I love, love, love making movement cards. Um, and I actually have a whole book of like sketches of things I wanna try, so. All right, I'm putting a little bit of it snail just on the back and I just have a quarter inch strip of Smoky Slate cardstock. I'm just sticking that on the back of this and I'm just gonna trim that just like that. And then we're gonna stick this whole thing onto our card right here, just up in the top right corner, just like that. And then we're just gonna trim off any excess cardstock. Okay, so cute already. And it didn't really take that long. I think it would have taken longer to actually fussy cut the, the walrus. I wanted to say hippo, holy cow. My goodness. Maybe I need some caffeine. Maybe that's my problem. Okay, I have a piece of the rest of our card bits. I have a piece of smoky slate, which is five and a quarter by four. That's what this is gonna go down onto. So you just wanna make sure that you're, now that the adhesive, the backing has been pulled off of those foam strips, you just wanna make sure that you don't get your slider stuck on there. I'm gonna stick this on here nice and straight, perfect. And we're gonna give it another test. <gasps> so cute. And then we're just gonna stick this onto our card base. And I'm using lots of snail. Those foam strips are a little bit thicker than our, um, than our regular dimensionals. So this might need a little bit of extra postage, but um, it's always funner to hand deliver movement cards because then you get to see their reaction when, when people get them. Isn't that cute? Okay, we're almost done. The card base that I used is basic gray and it was eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So cute. Okay, we're almost done guys. And okay. I have some flax ribbon here. I just need a little piece of it. I don't know, like two inches, just a little, little piece. Now you may have to make um, a custom envelope for this or even put it in a um, larger envelope, maybe like a five by seven envelope, just because this little slider end ends up poking out a little bit wider. So that's, I just stapled that on. You could punch a hole and punch it in, that's fine too. I thought the flax ribbon looked kind of like walrus whiskers. So I thought that was cute. 
anyway okay and our final touch is some frosted clear epoxy droplets which i just have like randomly in this bag <laughs> so i need to get my 10 year pick tool and let me pull in my other one because i i have no no brain power i need to figure out where where these are gonna go okay i'm just going to stick them on one up here i like the little droplets for this because they kind of look like and you could even use i'm using the clear ones you could use the good lord why can't i pick them up you could use the little frosted ones and it would look like ice back where where a walrus would live right they live in the in the north pole i think i think i don't know that's one animal we don't have here in the our zoo so we're not big experts on walruses now when you put down any embellishments you just want to make sure that they're not going to hinder the sliding especially if they're kind of bigger embellishments like these if I had put one like right here he might get caught on it and that's as far as he would go so you just want to make sure that you don't put them around the sliding area okay but that is it that's our walrus slider card isn't it a fun card isn't it so much fun so I have two of them I need to find two friends to send them to so I thank you guys very much for joining me if you need to order any supplies please head to my website and shop my online store. You can um, use the host code if your order's over $50 more. You're not only going to earn some bonus days coupons, but I'm also going to email you and ask you which color blend combo you want for free. So I will be back next Tuesday at 3 p.m. as usual. And until then, I hope you guys have a great week. And I'll see you then. Bye.